Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and another Workbench Wednesday. Uh, first, let me thank you for joining me again. It's always a pleasure to know that you're uh, out there looking forward to this, hopefully uh, as much as I am. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, of course, if this is your first time joining me, please remember to like, subscribe, bells, whistles, all the things you're supposed to do these days to make sure that you uh, keep up with Workbench Wednesday and Secret Weapon Miniatures. Of course, as always, if there's something that you'd like to see covered in a broadcast, please let me know. Uh, my favorite topic to cover whenever I'm doing these is whatever it is you'd like to see done. Today, uh, I'm actually filling in with Quest. Uh, I did a, uh, I was going to say last week in our last broadcast, uh, I did a uh, quick look at some of our vellum plants um, and why I think that the vellum is uh, superior than the traditional cardstock plants that have been on the market for a long time. Um, so I'll clean up one of these here. Um, but I didn't really get into detail on, on how you use them. But today I'm going to do that because it's like, well, that's great and they're neat. And uh, now what? <laughs> that seemed like a fair question, uh, particularly for something that's uh, new to the market, even for people familiar with paper plants in the past. Um, that said, I realize I just did everything I needed to do except get medium prepared for. Oh, I'm back up with that. Uh, for working with a paper, so I'm already going to have to pause for one sec. I uh, know where to look. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. It's always something. Yeah. Small shop challenge here, right? Trying to do uh, all the things at one time. Like this. And I'm going to bring that down and then reach over that camera stand and all that. Some water. don't have my uh, pre-mix ready, so I'm uh, improvising here. That one is out in the garage somewhere because I've been a bunch of uh, experiments uh, out there, not on, uh, not just on this product, uh, but on the uh, bases, which I left out there. Jeff, I'm sorry to ask, when you're at a spot where it's convenient. That's just my brush, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you grab the box of the, the, the HP bases that I need to show off. I have your preview. You've been... Uh, uh, running experiments with the uh, HD bases to check um, uh, how it reacts with solvents, how it holds up under solvents. Uh, so uh, after weeks of uh, testing like this, the latest batch that is out there now, is I took a set of the bases, uh, some of the 60 millimeter bases, and in one of them I uh, um, put a pool, a mis slightly miscus pool of 99% isopropyl, and another uh, um, slightly miscus pool uh, of uh, methyl ethyl ketone, plastic cement, uh, stuff that melts plastic. Um, excuse me. Um, mineral spirits, uh, terpenoids, uh, yeah, you name it. Uh, we uh, took bases and effectively just slopped this stuff on it, set each one on a timer for five minutes, um, and then wiped it uh, with a uh, clean towel uh, to see if there was any color loss. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, well, I guess uh, no surprise to us, but uh, the only one that had any color loss at all was the one that had uh, been sitting in methyl ethyl ketone because MEK is designed to dissolve plastics. <laughs> so uh, not only did it lose a bit of color, 
Uh, thank you very much. But uh, the base itself got a bit soft. Yeah. Awesome. I think that the keyboard out of here. I don't know if it's that. Get you guys split here to show off a few of these. You can see also we were doing some pin tests. One dribbling through one. Extra of the stone on that one. Da, 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 da. A couple of my favorites there. Lava test. We still haven't settled on a lava design, so this is still just a test. Working on ideas. This one is going to be the one, one of the ones that we launch with. And again, to details there. Let's see the subset detail. We have the 60s here. These are some of the ones uh, that I've been using for testing. So uh, this is the 99% ISO pool. Uh, oh, Zappagap. I did a, a pool of uh, Zappagap uh, on this one. And again, you know, no damage. It's just everything's fine. And I wiped them fairly aggressively with the towel. Uh, this was the MEK, and you can see where it took off the blue color up here and you know around the edge where it was pooling. Um, but that's it. You know, we're testing these thoroughly. It's why we haven't launched yet. We want to make sure that by the time uh, the product gets in your hands, uh, anything that's going to go wrong, we've uh, already addressed it. Um, and so far, there's not much to address. It's really great. We're still very happy with this product. Can't wait to bring it to market, of course. Um, yeah. But anyway, my base. Today we're working with the base, and we're working with some planks. Today I have the um, uh, length of ivy that I'll be working with. Uh, we also make one that's uh, ivy detail. Uh, it's three small length, uh, same size sheet, but it's three individual strips um, with more unique designs to help you, uh, uh, if you're doing a lot of ivy, help uh, create more variation. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to use the, the one ivy design today. And the other piece I'm going to use um, is a frame of our ferns, uh, possibly more than one frame of our ferns. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, I am uh, doing my best to stay focused. Today is one of those days where uh, very much wrestling with my brain weasels, and uh, the depression is um, very acute. Very fortunate to have. Uh, I'll bet that compressor sounds real nice, though, because it turns out the microphone had fallen off of its stand. Hey, hey, hey! I bet that's a lot better. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So again, I'll be uh, taking this base. I'm going to paint it up real quick. Uh, just knocked it together this morning. It's nothing uh, particularly wowza. Um, I took a couple of bits of uh, ceramic column, literally slapped glue between them. You can see it's messy. Um, glued a little, uh, it's got to be privateer, uh, raven on top or a little birdie on top, crow, whatever. A um, couple of skulls, obligatory skulls, because you have to have skulls. It wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be a miniature without skulls. Uh, a little piece of broken column, some dirt from my yard, uh, and a little bit of root material, uh, just to give it uh, a foundation for us to uh, to work up from. Um, and I'm going to start, uh, since I didn't put a, a whole lot of thought into this beforehand, um, this is a nice, fun, simple little project, and I just want to be able to fart around. Speaking of which, wiggle the chair. Go down, chair. There we go. <laughs> Uh, I'm one of those that likes to be really uh, uh, close to my desk when I uh, when I paint here. Um, all right, so I've got the airbrush turned on. Hopefully, I remember to clean this last time. Hey, look at that! I did. Getting better at this in my old age. Uh, nope. Black. Why do I even have black? 
You're like Payne's Gray, but sad. Sepia? More Payne's Gray? Well, that doesn't surprise me. It's the third bottle of Payne's Gray I found in here. But what I'm looking for, I'm using my uh, inks today, and I'm looking for my antelope brown. Uh, a fourth bottle of Payne's Gray. Okay, I might need to... Uh, fifth bottle of Payne's Gray. I might need to organize these a little... Um, since I've now found, what is that, five or six bottles of Payne's Gray, three bottles of Cool Gray, or Payne's Black, here we go, and one bottle of Antelope Brown. I may also use some of our uh, butterflies today, uh, depending on how time goes. Also, Charles, thank you for uh, letting me know about the volume and for uh, tuning in, of course. Now, I might be better at getting better at cleaning my airbrush, but... Uh, still horrible at remembering to put on my painting. Oh my god, my painting glasses. Look at that. It's a miracle I can see. Sorry, I don't have any of our tufts to show off. We've been uh, experimenting with a new uh, method for tuft making. We will be doing grass tufts. It's another one we've been working on for a long time because uh, at this point, everyone knows how to make them. There's no great mystery uh, to producing them. But one, we wanted to find a way to uh, at least semi-automate it um, because doing it by hand just isn't practical. Um, and second, we wanted to find a way to improve on existing ideas, uh, not simply by mass producing in the United States, because that's, you know, that's nice for some folks, but other, lots of folks don't care. So uh, if we were going to reach our global market, we wanted to make sure that our customers and fans in Europe had a reason to buy it. Australia had a reason to stock it. All of that. You could probably see right now why I like antelope brown so much for a dirt base coat. All right. And then So pervasive is that quote that I haven't seen the movie, and I still use it. Yay, pop culture. Oh, look at that. Checking you out off screen. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to do the uh, pillars in a uh, tan color. And I'll knock that out with the airbrush real quick, too. Zoop, doop, doo. First, a bit of cool gray. Further highlight my stones here. Bring my skulls. keep most of that uh, antelope brown on them because, uh, well, it's a good color for the aged skulls. Now a little bit of the totally not racist flesh tone. Looks like my flesh, so it must be right. Okay.
now you can see we've already got a really good foundation uh, to work up from. A little bit of powder, a little bit more paint. We're going to be rocking this. Um, and the color I'm going to use to help me rock that is actually going to surprise most of you that aren't Messieu Fontaine. <laughs> if I can find it. It looks like my kid has gotten into here, too. Which should not surprise me. My eight-year-old loves to airbrush. Indigo is just like what I'm looking for, only different. Does he have any of the inks over there? No. Interesting. Looking for the purple lake, and I just don't see it. Yeah, I guess you're not surprised by that either. <laughs> These are going to be the metallics, but I may even shoot some metallic. No, nah, I can't shoot metallic in there. I'm not that desperate. Oh, yeah, that's pearl. Well, wacky. That means it must be on my desk or one of the piles that I'm cleaning up from a different project. So, uh, well, I wanted a purple, um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to my paint spray. A little blue. That's good. I need a pain's gray anyway to do these shadows. A little bit over here. I'm going to shade the, around the bird and get the bird. Oh, cheers. Thank you. one advantage to having another full-time artist in the space is that they often have a solution because <laughs> chances are good if I'm looking for something I can't find she's got it so in this case we're using a little of the uh, golden liquid acrylic maybe possibly it's a little sealed come here you earth earth There we go. Lovely bottle. Adding a little bit of that to my shadows back here, too. I'm not saying color harmony, but color harmony. I'm going to shade it more on the bottom of this one. A little bit on the bottom of this one. A little bit on the bottom of that one. Boom. Already getting some visual interest. Some color harmonies. Keeping this at an angle from my shadow. They all have that same curvature to their shade. A little tiny bit through here, just to meet the color. There we go. Kaboom. So now we've got some interest. We've got uh, what looks more like a... Uh, Lush vegetative ground, then uh, dry desert eater. 
not what I'm after. Not with ferns. That stuff doesn't want to clean out. I will make you. Very hard to uh, fight the depression and uh, make sure I get the job done. Especially since this is a fun piece. All right, and I've realized I've turned off the air pressure, and I didn't mean to do that. So a couple of things. I'm going to show a couple of ways to do this, both with uh, traditional brush and airbrush. I'm also going to talk about, um, this is how the sheet comes. So you've got your... Uh, three ferns here. Two ways to do this. Uh, the first is to, not surprisingly, roll, roll, roll your fern gently off the sheet. Merrily, 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 merrily. Don't use tweezers for this. Um, I do recommend using your finger because, uh, fingers, um, you'll need more than one. Uh, because you can feel the pressure that you're putting on the vellum. Um, we made the vellum as thick as we felt we could while still maintaining the effect and finish that we want. Now that I've got a couple out, kind of grab from the middle where I've got my little intersection. Boom. And I can pull out my ferns. So that's the first way. And I can paint them on the sheet or not. What I do a lot with a product like this um, when it's adhesed anyway, uh, which ours are, most of what I have are not. Um, so in this case, I really appreciate uh, ours for this, is I'll pull the uh, sheet off um, the frame itself um, so that I can better see what I'm working on against the green here. And remember, of course, that the paper is not green. That paper is a translucent vellum. You can see through this. Well, heck, I'll grab a hunk of chunk of burning excuse me, sheet here. I'll just grab this section to make it much more obvious. You can see through it. There's my painty finger. There's my painty finger. And that's still my favorite um, unique selling point on our paper products. Uh, because I can get a lot more interesting finish uh, than simply having to completely paint um, green cardstock. I mean, uh, I have literally hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of other uh, paper cut plants um, within reach. But in those cases, and again, I want to make sure I'm not showing off their stuff because I'm not saying particularly kind things. Like in this case, I've got some, you know, watery plants. Can I do it from this side? I can do it from this side. So I've got my watery plants, but again, it's all going to be this green cardstock, this the green cardstock, and that's normal. Um, so I'm glad that we got to innovate a bit here, do something a little different. All right, so in this case, what I'm going to do is take a bit of sap green. Uh, again, if you're using uh, some of the dollar running inks at any time, they'll have a little T or O in their brackets here to let you know if it's translucent or opaque. Um, hmm. I broke it. So I'm going to take my sap green and I'm going to paint these ferns very differently. Actually, first I'm going to paint my ivy. So I am spraying the whole sheet very lightly. Now, heavy spots. Here, right there, a lot on that edge. 
but not on its inside. And a big old scoot right there. So I'm gonna let that dry because I super hit it hard just to be goofy. <laughs> now it's gonna take a while to dry. A little more green on a couple of spots. All right. So I'm gonna do something similar, but hopefully a little less uh, goofy. On the first one, I'm going to give the entire fern a very light coat of green, only from the one side. On the other, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing, except now I'm going to get heavy on the tips. This one the opposite. Go from the inside out, go back to the inside, just air to dry everything off. Hitting the inside of this one hard again. Trying to leave its leaves alone. I get the tips of this one again. Oh right, that one just gets a gentle coat. So stop. <laughs> I'm gonna get crazy! In both cases, I uh, still want to keep this simple. There's a lot that we could do here. Um, particularly, uh, one that I'm not using today is the uh, water lilies and lotus. Um, and we have examples on the website and Facebook uh, from, in fact, um, Jess Rich. Um, painting a set of these up for one of her bases and great googly moogly um, wow uh, you'll see that you can do a lot including uh, you know adding a bunch of texture um, incredible fades uh, for this one I'm gonna keep it a little simpler um, in no small part because she's way better at that than I am don't tell her though all right here we go so I'm gonna get my pieces back here <laughs> um, You didn't hear any of that. You know nothing. Uh, so I'm actually going to stick with my inks here. And I've got, obviously, 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 pew! Wait, obviously, a very bright green. There we go. It took a while for me to get that on screen. So I'm going to pull that back off screen because you don't have to care. Do my sponge technique, my sponge technique, the sponge technique. I don't know what I do. Sponge on some color. The same thing through these. And before I'm finished, I will take a bit of more rust and do the same thing. Last but not least, but only for the ferns, I'm going to take a bit of, should already be out, cool gray. Actually, I'll use a little bit of this on the ivy just to show you how it looks. Also mix this in with what was left of the uh, orange rust, which isn't much, but... And I'll spare one of the burns that treatment. All right, now I'm actually going to hit them with the airbrush, uh, just air, to help it dry. So I need this nice and dry before I try to pull it off of the sheet. And we are talking about paper that's gently adhesed to paper. 
and uh, I don't want any ripping to occur while it's wet. I don't want any ripping to occur while it's dry, but all right, that doesn't work anymore. Okay. Let's start by taking off our three ferns and showing you the difference. Come here, you. From this side, the color bleeds through, but we get that still white vellum color from this side. On this side, this is the one that only received a teeny tiny bit of color. Now, I'll pinch these all together here. So that's our light color. This is the one where I did dark tips and a light interior. If you are going to rip off the uh, outside shell, um, as I do, uh, I recommend uh, ripping it between plants. Um, so you're not trying to get the whole sheet off at once, because that's more trouble than it's worth. Don't do that. Be smarter than me. So here, again, from the back, the two plants look different very much see the extra color coming through on this one compared to that one. So here's our light and our medium. Again, very different plants. Last but not least, there's our heavy center light leaves. And then we're going to get crazy. I'm going to get crazy. You don't even know. Brace yourself. Strap in, Sunny Jim. We're going on a wild ride. All right, there's my third one. Also, that's kind of fun. <laughs> Just that. All right, and here's my third. So this is the one with lots more color in the middle compared to this one. And again, because I did a lot more color on this one in general, it presents a darker back. So now we've got one, two, three. I'm going to pinch number three. Um, I happen to have somewhere a burnishing tool. Uh, you don't necessarily need one. In fact, I'm going to skip my burnishing tool for a paintbrush uh, because maybe you don't have a burnishing tool. A burnishing tool is uh, effectively a ball and a stick. Um, are my burnishing tool? You don't like it. So this is a burnishing tool. So I would normally burnish with it, but I'm not going to, especially since this one has putty on it from whatever I was doing last time. Um, so I'm just going to use the handle of my paintbrush here. I was going to say toothbrush. Glad I didn't do that. That would have been embarrassing. And at this point, I've pinched up all of my little ferny leaves. Now I can just take this and put it on a base. <gasps> Wait, no, that actually looks amazing. Okay. But I can also take another one, pinch it up a little bit tighter, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit of blooming fern. All right, give it a little tighter pinch. Wait a minute, wait a minute, oh, 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 this is not even its final form. I choose to evolve my fern, boom. Oh, and look, because the leaves are different, I now have a variegated and more interesting fern. Oh, and it still looks amazing. But wait, that's not all. Okay, so. First, I'm going to put a little spot of glue right here where I want my fern. I'm just using CA right now. I would normally use something uh, a little more 
uh, viscous like um, uh, wood glue, but I don't want to get up and get it. I'm feeling lazy. I need more light. So I've given myself a shadow. Congratulations on my shadow. Let's put that one there. Rotate this one ever so slightly and put it right there. Okay, let that dry. I'm gonna come over here and start peeling my ivy. So the ivy, um, like I said, we have uh, two ivy products uh, at the moment. Um, one is this uh, contiguous length of ivy and the other is three individual strips with a bit more detail on them so that you can add uh, more variation to your displays, dioramas, layouts. You can rip your vine like I just did. Take your time, use your fingers. Remember the corners are wide loops for a reason. <laughs> or the turns, I should say. Not exactly a corner. If you start to feel any kind of tug, get right up close when you're pulling it off. You'll see me do that, especially as I turn here. So that's where it gets tightest. Took us to, to Greg the longest time to get that sorted out. Now you'll note too that I've left a few leaves behind as I was pulling, no big deal. One of the nice things about that, um, first off, you won't really notice it missing. <laughs> There's so many, uh, but the other nice thing about that um, is that I can actually go back for those individual leaves if I want to and use them for individual accents on the base. Uh, we will also be releasing um, individual specific tree leaves, uh, but not in the very near future. Right, I keep grabbing that and it's still not going. All right. Oh, and my ivy. So you can see very quickly the difference between the translucent side and the color side. And I'm going to uh, <laughs> don't go far. <laughs> You're cute. Thank you. That was uh, Jess Rich bringing me emergency Manhattan. <laughs> Cheers to you. Thank you. No, that was that was great. That's a, a, that's a laugh and a smile I really needed today, so I appreciate it. I'm like, what is she doing? Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Hey, look at that. It's fixed. All right. So here is my length of ivy. And I am, of course, obligated by state and federal statute to wrap it around this column. Start that by gluing an end of it. I'm sure you're shocked. Do the column. Okay, not really shocked. Next, we're going to put our other little fluffy plant. It's the fluffiest plant. Lots of people have told me that it's so fluffy. Sorry, that might be uh, skirting too close to political humor these days. I do have the fluffiest plants, everyone tells me. I've heard from lots of people. Smart people who know what they're talking about. Modelers you would have heard of.
I wouldn't want to use their names here because they're all in bed with big enamel. I don't know, maybe I should do the show depressed more often. Clearly working for me. Okay. So I have a twist I like here. And I am going to glue a section of it to the top of the pillar. Again, I'd normally do this something like uh, wood glue, but uh, even realistic water, or not realistic, well actually, yeah, realistic water, um, or the water effects from Woodland Scenics would work as well, um, but the realistic water would be great. Uh, again, just no time for that when we're doing it here. CA works, it's just not my first choice, right? I don't need to look for my scissors over there because my little scissors should be in here. In the uh, drawer conveniently labeled drill and cut just a little bit of uh <laughs> yeah i've got uh what is it a dozen drawers in front of me that have uh most of my usual uh tools each labeled and uh ready to go i remember being one of those people that would see the uh super organized garage you know we walk into Granddad's garage, and every screw's in its little bin, and every tool has a place. And God help you if the uh, tool is not back on its, you know, designated spot when you're done tightening the trucks on your skateboard. Don't get an earful for that. And I used to think that was ridiculous. Now, of course, that I'm working in the studio full time for years, I'm like, ah, my son moved a drawer so he could do that awesome thing that he did. Yeah. We've reached the point where I'm not only considering giving my son, well, he already has his own paints, brushes, all that, because only so many times you can come in and find out that all of your uh, Sharf and Raphael brushes have been uh, pretty much ruined overnight. <laughs> yeah, I slept in on Saturday. I have no brushes to paint with. Uh, I've considered getting him his own airbrush, because um, <laughs> he'll use this one so often, and uh, he's gotten better about cleaning it, too, uh, fortunately. Um, but yeah, I've thought about getting him a bunch of his own tools so I don't have to worry about, like, where am I? I'm actually going to... All right, so this is where our new toy comes in. The other thing that we're working on is a vellum shaper. And in this case, I actually want it. I didn't feel I needed it for the first one, but I am... And I've got the latest formulation waiting for me at the warehouse. I'll pick it up tomorrow. I go in to uh, make paint for our mech line. We need to process a batch of that. We also got our uh, semi-automatic uh, paint bottling machine working. Very excited. And by we, I mean the crew there. I had meant to come in uh, a couple weeks ago and do that. And instead, I get an email from uh, Richard somebody saying, look what we did. Well, of course you did. All right. So this is our super secret hypersonic paper shaving formula. And I think that needs to be its official name. Greg, I hope you're watching. <laughs> All right. So now I can more easily twist, turn, pinch, curl, break. And that's fine too. Take this down here. It's already glued in place, so you can bet I'm going to use it. I'll just use it down. I'm also going to take some and put it on the pieces that are already on the column, because I want to fold these down too. There we go. I can start to fold individual leaves. Now I'm going to get back to those. But for the moment, I still want to come in with this piece. So let's put that... I'm actually going to do something a little different. I'm going to put that here on camera. Ha ha! Follow along! It's cardio time with the Invisible Man. Okay, so you, hey, you, yes, you. I'm talking to you. Don't argue with me, you're inanimate. 
Granted, as a modeler, I do spend the vast majority of my time arguing with inanimate objects, particularly when they're made of brass. Uh, the brass, 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 brass. All right, so now I'm going to break that again. It's okay. I have more than I need. I'm not worried about that. I just want to make sure I get it everywhere I want it. For instance, I'm going to put a tiny dot of blue right here. Bring this guy up and onto it. Because it's uh, damp, it should uh, adhere very quickly. All right, I'm gonna leave those to dry. I don't wanna mess with them. What I do wanna do is come get my ferns with our super secret hypersonic formula. Glad I got it right the second time. That's a uh, product name you don't wanna forget. I mean, it's no yellow snow, but... Uh, oh, look at that, these... Leaves now want to curl on their own. Isn't that nice? So I am going to uh, right use my brush handle because I'm not using my burnishing tool, and I'm going to bend them where I want them, shape them, get the leaves, curl them around, under, over, push, press, grab. go and I'm sure to no great surprise I'm going to do that on our double fern over here now I could have done this before I placed but I chose not to um, unlike the uh, ivy uh, I really wanted these to be secure and in place uh, with no great risk of breaking before I started messing with them because the ferns are more of a feature right here and I'm even going to take my brush here with one uh, hand and use my other to bend that leaf around it, just spin it a little bit. So now I get that nice little curl in the middle of its forehead. So really, the only thing that I have here in terms of detail for this base are a couple of ferns, some ivy, dirt in a column. I mean, this is a nice scene already. There's very little to it. I wish I had our actual super secret hypersonic formula here because this is pretty good, but it's not as good. That's what I forget for not or get for not going to the warehouse yet. Uh oh, and this one fell down. Let's fix that. Actually, let's put that over here so it comes all the way around. Kind of hide that skull and some ivy here. I think that'll make a more interesting story, sell a better idea that, of age on our base here. The skull's been here so long, ivy's growing out of it. But sure, Tim, go ahead. Have your character stick his hand in the big hole that spiders are coming out of, and we'll see what happens. Maybe it is a secret door. You're right. Joking aside, I did have a uh, 
D and D campaign where the the party was just determined to make me gawk and wonder if they were just trolling me. Um, they were guests of a new king. I deposed the old king and they were in his uh, castle, as it were, and uh, told that it would probably take a week for him to get to them because he was busy negotiating whether or not he got to stay king with the other nobles. So they uh, came up with a bunch of ideas for what they were going to do and uh, kept being clear that the guards were like, no, you need to wait for the king. And I'm like, well, all right. What about, you know, spying on him? What about this? What about that? And I pointed out they had three different ways they could have found out what was going on. And I presented each a way to climb up where they could, where the... Uh, rogue could very easily uh, overhear conversations and observe the negotiations uh, made it very clear that there was good reason to feel confident they could get away with that um, i don't remember the other two but i gave them two other options where i was like yes 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 you feel confident about this you could do that so of course what they decided to do immediately is march to the front door and demand to be released so they walk up to the two guards at the main gate you're leaving well the king has asked you to wait upon his pleasure and it should only be a couple more days I say no we're leaving now guard disagrees so they have one of the characters punch a guard in the face now it's worth noting that the character that punched the guard in the face belonged to a player who wasn't there that week <laughs> so they're like ooh we'll have Mario's character punch a guard just staring at him like there were the there were the three ways. I have it all written down. I wrote down notes for all three things that you could do here, and I lobbied hard for you to do one of the three things. And you're seriously telling me that you're going to the front door, you're going to ask to leave, and when the guy says no, have the character of the player who's not here punch him in the face and see what happens. They spent the rest of the session on the run for murder after they killed the two door guards. <laughs> There was a period there where I genuinely had no idea what we were going to do next. I'm like, all right, players, what can you do? You can bend a uh, ferns. That's what you can do. They twist. Just give this one a little twist. Pinch its little any leaves there we go lift this one back up all right again i haven't even done any uh, pigments or detail painting the bird is still just uh what Payne's gray uh, the skulls don't have any actual uh, detail or highlighting uh, but already we have a lush and vibrant scene uh, what I hope is that uh, anybody watching realizes uh, just how easy it is to work with the plants. Um, you can certainly do it without our super secret, uh, super secret hypersonic formula, uh, but it will help to get the uh, uh, flexibility. Um, it'll also help them stay afterwards um, as you've shaped them. Yeah. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Just get those leaves doing something other than standing straight up. Crazy thing to do. I'm going to take a little bit of my very light green, a little bit of that gray, a little bit of water. Well, the gray is all gone, so well, mostly gone. Thin this out, nice and thin, pretty much wash consistency. Take some of it off on my sleeve. Get it out.
too much of the uh, super secret hypersonic formula on that one. They're sticking together. There we go. So I'm coming through now with the edge of my brush. I'm adding some of this very bright color just to some select spots on these leaves. Get that uh, little ivy texture. Fiddle with that, it's gonna pick it up, I'm telling you that. All right, let's see here. Properties, properties, properties. Configure video, bugger off, come back. Focus. All right, so that's where I'm gonna to need to be focused, but let's see if I can find a leaf where you can see it. I've added it to these two, but it's very subtle. So I'm going to hit that one right there. Right here. Adding that much brighter green right here. Little uh, lines because I can. Little fern because it's hanging over the edge and I broke it. I can hit the ferns the same way. Ooh, a little too much. Playing action, string it through there. That'll be easier to do when these are completely dry. Which also means I'm about out of stuff that I can do on this base for probably a half hour. Which means we're going to wrap up soon, like we do. Pull my brain together long enough to get other work done today. Still sticking together over here, so let's uh, take that apart. Not want sticky fern. But I will separate you two. Stick that leaf somewhere else. There we go. All right.
try different lights. Keep that one. Kill that one. A little better. Hey, Greg. Thank you for joining us. You're uh, just in time for it to wind down. But uh, this is the uh, thing we created today with the uh, product you developed. Showing off our uh, super secret hypersonic paper shaving formula, as well as uh, a set of the ferns. So we created a uh, double fern over here by uh, bunching two of them together to create a thicker, more luscious fern. Such lush. And then a single fern over here, hiding this petit skull. And some ivy in different lengths. Coming around our column and hanging out over here. And that's it, folks. Uh, I will probably finish off this base at some point, as I have uh, most of the others I've given a start uh, to, just to show off products. Uh, but for the moment, that's all I've gotten today. Uh, my goal is to show off the paper products. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think we've uh, we've accomplished that together. Um, again, I really appreciate you tuning in to Workbench Wednesday. Uh, it's a real pleasure uh, knowing that you're out there. Uh, makes a big difference. So thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, I will catch you next time. And uh, again, if this is your first time, please remember, like, subscribe, bells, whistles, all the things you need to do to keep in touch. And of course, if there's something you'd like to see covered, uh, much like the paper plants were today, uh, please get in touch. Let me know uh, what you'd like to see covered. It does not have to be uh, related to our products. I'm always happy to answer uh, hobby questions from anyone in the community. It really is my favorite part of the job. So if you have a question, please feel free to ask. And in the meantime, to everyone out there, happy hobbying from all of us at Secret Weapon. Cheers.